at the moment, we associate big winners as Microsoft because of their ability to see the opportunity in open AI. We see that Google is still really front and center when it comes to a race, if we think about it here in the US. But can they be AI first? Um, theoretically, they're the best equipped to be AI first because they have the most AI experts in those two companies. If you count open AI in Microsoft's camp. Um, but what they face is a fundamental business issue of um, cannibalizing your own business. So for a large company, imagine if you will, you're Microsoft or Google, the first thing you're going to think to want to do once you invent this technology is how do you make money? And of course, Google will make the most money from putting it in search. Microsoft will make the most money by putting it in office. So um, that will be the low hanging fruit. But will Microsoft become a disruptor that says, I'm going to build a new engine that's AI first, that causes no people to no longer need or want to use Office or pay for it. Um, few companies, if any, has ever uh, done that, right? When Kodak invented the digital camera, they shelved it because they think it would kill the film, film business. It, it did, but it wasn't because of them, but, but other companies, right? So the, the same thing happens um, with uh, you know, Intel not embracing mobile, Qualcomm not embracing AI, and the list goes on. So it's fundamentally really hard for a large company not to take this technology and put it in their most best-selling product to make that easy, low-hanging fruit. And it's incredibly hard for them to build a disruptive product that will challenge, cannibalize, and potentially kill the revenue um, that is currently a cash cow. When I think of what you are doing now with a one AI and that being zero one everything is, is, is how it would be interpreted in the, U, in the US. We're, you're doing things in an open source manner. And what was so interesting is you sort of referenced the two killer apps thus far that are AI first, and we're thinking about open AI's chat GPT, we're thinking about character AI. You also had the curve in the graph that showed sort of proprietary. Uh, LLMs and, and open source LLMs. When I was reading AI superpowers, you were thinking about ultimately when the next iteration of AI would happen, how it would happen, and you sort of hoped, dare I read between the lines, that it would come from academia and it would be open. Mm. And it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It came from open AI, but many would say that's a proprietary large language model. How did you feel when it was a proprietary model? Well, I think OpenAI should change their name to close the AI to starters <laughs> to avoid misleading uh, those who don't know. Uh, it did start as an open company, which was the right direction. But as, um, as greed is always the enemy of goodwill, uh, once they saw the opportunity, they felt closing it down was the best way to make the most money, which I don't disagree with. But the problem when you have one or two top closed models um, then uh, everybody becomes beholden to those models. If you think this is the way we get to the you know, IQ 500, IQ 800 system, that's so amazingly smart, but also so amazingly dangerous uh, to let one or two companies control that is, is very dangerous. Uh, furthermore, um, in a closed model, then a lot, who loses, right? Uh, it's really those who need access to technology professors, researchers, hobbyists, entrepreneurs, students, uh, they would not be able to learn how to train and tune and align these models because the underneath is a black box that can't be trained or aligned or tuned. So I feel open source is, the, um, is a way to, to provide that accessibility to everybody. Um, and it's not a country that country, but really a segment by segment, uh, the next innovation is much more likely to come from the group of researchers, professors, students, and entrepreneurs than it is from any large company. So to remove those tools, I think, would be uh, the wrong thing to do for humanity. So um, we decided, even though we're a much smaller company at Zero1.ai, uh, we would partake in the open source revolution. We have made everything we've done uh, open source so far, um, as, and there are other companies who've done that. Meta, um, I think, has done the same. And, and of course, it doesn't mean when you're an open source company, everything's forever open source. Yeah. We still do need to make money and satisfy our investors. So we will figure out 
ways to make money, either with larger models or APIs or applications. Um, but we think providing that access to, to everyone is an important and the responsible thing to do.